Hello YouTube, Richard, founder of ShortTermRentalSecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. One of the most frequent questions I get, and I absolutely love it because it shows like grit and gung-ho and people wanting to be entrepreneurial is, how can I do Airbnb full-time? Now recognize I'm not going to be able to address every single person's situations, both financial and their dreams and aspirations, but I do have a way to get started thinking about this, just some rules of thumb, some guidelines, and I think you'll find them helpful. So if you're looking for a get rich quick scheme, I'm sorry to disappoint you, this isn't it. This is going to require time and energy and you're going to build up for it. Let's open up the hood and get underneath it and just start to look at what these numbers look like to give you a ballpark as a goal. Let's just say the home costs about $400,000. Let's say that you put down 20%, which I think is the least you want to put down. And let's say that you get a 30-year fixed mortgage in September of 2017, you can get that at about 4%. So let's just go through that again. $400,000 purchase price, $80,000 down payment. You do need extra cash to pay the lawyers and the title insurance and closing costs. 4% interest rate, I recommend a 30-year fixed or a 15-year fixed, more on that a little bit later. When I take a look at an online calculator, the payment is $1,528 per month. So in order to pay this mortgage and own the property outright, for 30 years, you're gonna have a fixed payment of $1,528, and then you're gonna have expenses on top of that. Taxes, repairs, utilities, and so on. And so you can pick any number that you would like when you do your numbers. I'm gonna say it's another $1,000 a month, which should cover taxes and most uh, utilities and so on. So the monthly amount that I would need is $2,500 a month to pay for this property for the next 30 years. And in order to generate the kind of return that I'm looking to generate, let's say I want this property to generate $2,000 a month in free cash flow to me. So now I need to generate $4,500, $2,500 to pay the mortgage and all the expenses, plus my $2,000 desired profit per month. So my monthly nut is $4,500. I like to assume a uh, occupancy rate of about 70%, 70. So what that means is on a monthly basis, there's 30 days in a month. When you multiply that times 0.7, it turns out to be 21 days. So now the very simple math is I'm gonna take $4,500 a month, which is what I need, divided by 21, and that gives me what I need to make per night each of those 21 nights. So when you do the math, it's $214 per night. It's a little bit more because Airbnb is going to charge some fees, um, but let's just say it's $225 a night. Now, when you go and look at the properties and the neighborhood, can, you need to think about this. Can the property command $225 a night? If it's a small studio in a very urban city like New York City, likely yes. If it's a small studio in the middle of you know, a rural area, $225 might be way out of the ballpark, and that's probably not a good investment. Okay, so in this really simple example, just not even on an envelope, right? We're just talking out loud here. It generates $2,000 a month. Now it's not going to be consistent every single month. You might have a great month, you make $3,000. You have a bad month, you make $1,000. But let's just assume on average you're making $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year in profit. Um, that's probably not enough for you to live on and to leave your full-time job. So take a look at what your desired income is and your cost of living and so on, and just multiply it by that number of houses. So if you need 48,000, you need two of these. If you need 72, you need three of these. Um, and just do the math yourself and figure out how many homes you have. And again, it's not a get rich quick scheme. I'm not assuming that you have this big pile of money and you can just go put down 20% every time you wanna buy a home. But what you can do is continue to work full time, take the first 24,000, the first 12 months of your labor, and instead of spending it and doing nice vacations and fancy dinners, put it aside. Do that for a year, two years, three years, however long you need to do it until you save enough for your down payment and then get started and then do that again. Now, I recommend for somebody getting started the 30-year fixed mortgage because we're in a rising interest rate environment. For those of you that don't know, I spent a long time on Wall Street. Uh, we're at all-time lows in interest rates. It's a great time to get a mortgage, but I would not recommend a floating rate mortgage even though it's less expensive on a monthly basis because as we go into a rising interest rate environment, your mortgage payments are gonna be floating and they could go up and up and up. And in most of these floating rate notes, the upper bound is ridiculous. It's like 17%. For those of you who don't know, check the historical interest rates in the 1980s. They were 17%. Imagine paying 17% for your mortgage when today you could lock in a 30-year mortgage at 4%. 
I don't recommend it. There's no point in that. Your vision is longer dated than month to month. So lock in a 30 year. For me, I use 15 years because it allows me to shave 15 years of payments off. Now that means that I'm forced savings more. I'm not using the cash flow, the profit of the property to fund my lifestyle or to fund other purchases. What I'm really doing is taking that extra savings and putting it right into the equity in that property. All right, so this is a lot. I wanna just recap it here so that we're all on the same page. In order to get started, you're gonna need some amount of money for a down payment. I recommend 20%. I recommend getting a fixed mortgage. I recommend buying a property that's not a super stretch for you. And I recommend doing the math. Once you do all that, take a look at what you need to make for your mortgage, add your expenses and taxes, and put in a buffer and cushion for all of your expenses. You know, Maybe add 10 or 15% versus your projection just as a safety buffer. And then on top of that, add your pro desired profit. And that's your new monthly nut. Divide it by the occupancy rate that you uh, think is capable. Do not use 90%, do not use 80%, assume the worst. I use 70%. Once you know how much you're making on a given property, you know how many you need in order to live the lifestyle that you wanna fund and go ahead and do that. So you might need three or four or five. Uh, it's totally personal preference and recognize that over time, chances are you get better at this, you make better investments, you buy properties properly, um, your rent increases, your occupancy rate increases. So this is just a baseline to get you started. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. Share with us what you're thinking. Uh, we'll do more of these videos. I think we're gonna start to get a little bit more into um, how to get started, how to grow it, how to do these things. Again, we're at your like you know direction. So share with us if you think this is helpful, like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, 